drop it. Show a little obnoxious music. I've got a headache. You know, being ill isn't very fun, as you can probably imagine. And as you can tell by my voice and my face, I'm not feeling so good right now. But as a result, I've been kind of slacking on reviews that I kind of hoped would be out by now. So, sorry about that. So, while we wait for my illness to go away, I thought it only makes sense to do a list of the top 10 games to play when you're ill. Games that would soothe your headache rather than make it worse. Not to be confused with the top 10 relaxing games. Just... Yeah, it's pretty much just the top 10 relaxing games, actually. Some of you out there might be saying, there's no such thing as a good video game to play when you're ill. Because they all give you headaches in some way. That's not true, so I'm going to list some that don't. So, hopefully, if you can still understand what I'm saying, despite my stuffed voice, let's get into this. I'm kicking this list off with Shadow of the Colossus, which may not seem like a very relaxing game to play for multiple reasons, but let me explain. If you don't know already, Sotk is a game where you literally search for a giant colossus, find a giant colossus, kill the giant colossus, and then search for the next giant colossus. No BS, anime, romance, weapon equip, real time strategy update, dull magic of souls system, fake crap, none of that. Not only that, but to the colossi? You're pretty much the equivalent of a Lego piece to them, so yeah, good luck killing that guy. And if you haven't figured already, stabbing them in the foot with your little sword isn't going to do the trick. So essentially they're all gigantic walking puzzles, in which you have nothing but your sense of determination to climb them, find their weak spot, and then stab it repeatedly until they die. And remember kids, stabbing giant ancient animals which may be on the brink of extinction for no good reason at all is fun. <coughs> But not only is the world of Sot so immersive and the Colossi so mythical and awesome that you won't even have time to remember you're sick at all, but free roaming around on your horse aggro and exploring the world of... Uh... I don't know, Sotskville, is pretty damn relaxing. But as relaxing as taking in the sights with aggro might be, it isn't quite as relaxing as stabbing a Colossus in its stupid head! Now I'll admit, this is more of a personal nostalgia thing for me more than anything else on this list, but everybody has a game like this that they grew up with. Whenever I mail and I have a sick day at home to waste, I try and complete Spyro 2 in one sitting. Don't get me wrong, Spyro 3 is an awesome game, and Spyro 1 is... Yeah, it's okay. But there's a certain charm to Spyro 2 that no other game has that makes it such a classic for me. It's one of those games that aren't too difficult nor too long, but it's fun to challenge yourself on a game you already know like the back of your hand. Some people it's Super Mario Bros, obviously it's Ocarina of Time, hell, some people it might even be Fantavision. But for me, Spyro 2 is a game I've been playing since I can remember, and no doubt a game I'll still be playing for years to come. Just try not to think about the games that he's in now. It might be weird that I'm putting the PS2 version of Sims 2 on this list specifically, but I never got the chance to play the PC games, and I doubt that what I say here would apply to the PC version too. Anyway, the thing with The Sims is that it's only relaxing half the time. There is a lot of relaxing stuff to the game, like building a house, having people do stuff in it, buying stuff, selling the toilet, but at times the game can get kind of frustrating. For God's sake, just get up! You're gonna get fired! You're gonna be late for work! I leave the house for two minutes and you all set the oven on fire! Oh, fantastic! I stood in the fire accidentally, now I'm dead! You just wet yourself in the living room! Why did you do that? Oh. Wait. But at times like this, The Sims games always seem very similar to the GTA games in the sense that it's always better to play in cheat mode. Apply some cheat sound, the cheat statue appears. You can add cheats to it like max all your bars, unlock every item in the game and whatever else you can do, I don't know, I'm not a strategy guy. And then just like that, with all your frustration taken away, The Sims is now a relaxing game. I know it's more fun to play The Sims as it was actually intended without the cheats, but it's so tempting to just be like, Oh hey look, a statue. Hey, what's going on? Hey, look, look at that. I'm rich. Hey, look at all this money. I used to spend hours upon hours every day working on a house with no financial limits or stress. Things like making every room unnecessarily big and just filling them with stupid things like toilets and pianos. And the script just ended there. I guess I forgot to write any more. Um, so number eight. Sims 2 in cheat mode. Uh, moving on to number seven. Uh... The next game on this list is actually a 3DS game, which means that I won't have any gameplay. I probably could, but I can't be bothered to download any. Next up on my list for number 7 is Pilot Wings Resort. Pilot Wings Resort was one of the main launch titles for the 3DS back when it was first released, and I can't understand why it gets all the hate that it gets. 
Apart from the fact that it's a single mini game from a Wii game packaged into a £30 3DS game. And it's not even a game really, it's more of a tech demo just flying around a giant island. It's just showing off what the 3DS can do. If that's what you think about this game, I can completely understand, but nevertheless, I really do like Pilot Wings Resort. The relaxing part of this game comes from free flight mode, where you can just fly freely. But you can't really, because you have a three minute timer, so you always feel like you're being chained down a little bit, which is kind of annoying. So yeah, Pilot Wings Resort, a good game to play in bed when you're all snuggled up with a hot water bottle. Pretty relaxing at times. So yeah, good. Next, I should really script these. From a first glance, you'd probably see that this game just looks like a ripoff of Kirby 64. Yeah, it's clear to see that Clone Noah was definitely inspired by Kirby a lot. But hey, there's nothing wrong with a good ripoff as long as it's good. Not that this game is a ripoff. But I'm, I'm, I'm getting to that. But once you delve a little bit deeper into Clone Noah, you'll see that it's actually pretty original too. Using enemies to get collectibles and to progress in the game, using these things, and the sense of humour in this game is a little bit weird too. Like, what? Anyways, I was saying, it isn't really a rip-off, so shut up. But in the same vein as Kirby, everything's happy, the music's nice and comforting, and despite the threat that the enemies may or may not pose, you always feel like you're in a safe environment in the game. When I first ever got my PS2, it came with one of those little demo disc things that would show what the console would have in store. One of those games on that disc was Clone Noah 2, and not long after playing it, I fell in love with the game and then lost the demo disc and never found it ever again. As a result, I completely forgot the name of the game, so I spent years just trying to remember what what it was called. But then years later an epiphany was had, I remembered! And so I bought it from eBay and when it finally arrived it was like the opposite of Casablanca. Because at the end the plane's going away and Humphrey Gokart's like, well I'll never see her again, play it again Sam. But here it's like, the game's coming in and I'm, I don't know. None of this has anything to do with why it's a relaxing game does it? <sighs> oh well. I originally chose Animal Crossing for this top 10, but in the end I replaced it with Minecraft. I know, I know, Animal Crossing's a good game, only because I barely played enough of Animal Crossing to do it justice and comment on it, so shut up, I know it's a good game. But moving on, Minecraft can be a pretty relaxing game. Sure, there are creepers and spiders and a skeleton archmen and pigs. But I'm not actually talking about survival mode. Being a kid who used to spend all his time making Lego creations, not the first time I brought up Lego in this video, I get my kicks from Minecraft in creative mode. Whenever I'm feeling sick and I have some time to kill, there aren't many things better, only four things better to be precise, than spending hours upon hours creating sprite art, blowing stuff up, or better yet, creating your dream mansion. And just to prove how much time I've spent in creative mode in the past year that I've owned Minecraft, here's what I work on whenever I'm not feeling so good. Welcome to Cade Manor, passed down through generations of a rich history spanning over 1,000 years. Come inside and witness the staircase of light. Open the staircase door to pair off to- Cal, what are you doing? You Cal, go away! You're not supposed to be inside the castle grounds! Go away! Open the staircase door to pair off the balcony to Cade Manor's beautiful courtyard with their botanical garden and bridge in sight. Take a trip down the walls of the castle, which were once used to fend off the mighty Ender Dragon of legend. Witness the statue of victory as you have seen on Google Images. The castle features many hidden libraries. Can you find them? No, no, it's cheating. Put, put it back. Come on, put it back. That doesn't count. Put find the indoor nature room made of real grass for the animals in case the outdoor grass does not suffice. Allow your mind to be blown at the sight of the clock tower with a now non-functioning clock that has quite literally not stood the test of time. Also, it kind of looks like a giant robot, which is also pretty awesome. There are many things to find in Cade Manor. What will be waiting for you if you dare to explore on your next visit? Yeah, we're getting real relaxing now. Endless Ocean on the Nintendo Wii is a game in which you swim. You swim around, discover new fish, locations and items, do side quests. Hell, it's pretty much GTA Barrier Reef. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. This sounds like the most boring game I've ever heard in my damn life. You know what? Relaxing does not equal boring, and Endless Ocean is a great example of this. And the more I think about it, the more this is actually like a GTA game underwater. There are missions and things to do, and I mean a lot of things to do, but you can ignore them and go exploring if you want. You'll find that you can't go everywhere though. You need to advance the story to get to certain areas of the map, or in this case, you can't go deeper down because of the limitations of your diver gear. You can get a pet dolphin and teach it to do flips. 
pretty sure you can do that in one of the GTA games. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you can understand how amazing and moving the ocean can be with the right music and atmosphere. Endless Ocean gets this down really well, and no doubt that this game will alleviate any stress or headaches that you might have. It might look boring from the gameplay that you're seeing, but it's not. You're gonna have to trust me on this one. The only thing about this game that is boring though, is the variety of hairstyles for your character. You can either be the lead singer of Pretty Boy Incorporated, or you can be a obnoxious ponytail guy. Endless Ocean 2 out of 10 needs more hairstyles. It's a and now, let's go from a relaxing game about being underwater to a game centred around setting things on fire. Only on Farfetch reviews can you guarantee such variety. Little Inferno is pretty much just a simple physics game, in which you burn things, use the money you get from the burnt things to buy more things, and then burn those new things with the money you got from the things to buy new things. The thing with Little Inferno is, it starts off pretty sweet and innocent like popcorn and an alarm clock, but before you know it, a pirate? Set it on fire! Someone else's family portrait? Set it on fire! Mangled stuffed bunny which may not still be alive? Well, what do you know? Set it on fire. So, there are definitely some moral implications to be had with this game. I still own a lot of my teddies that were bought for me before I was even born. So, playing a game about kids being forced into throwing all of their prized possessions into a fire is pretty depressing. I may be venturing out of my childhood, but I can still admit, I'm still pretty attached to a lot of my old teddies. As I was saying, once you get over the possibly depressing undertones in this game, it's fun to watch things burn. Besides, what else is better than a game about being warm when you're trying to be warm? Well, that's a segue to number two, by the way. Little Big Planet, possibly one of the cutesiest, family friendliest platformers I've ever played in my life. And what do you know, it isn't actually a Nintendo game. Not only that, but it can be a damn hard game too. I should know, I got a platinum trophy on this game and it was not easy at all, let me tell you. I have raged more at this game than most other games I've ever played in my life. So why exactly is this the second best game to play to help you soothe a headache? Well, because of the first couple of worlds. Sure, when you get to the harder levels, gonna have a bad time. But the first couple of worlds are fun easy and the music is pretty nice and uplifting. And also, if you look in the right places, the community has a lot of nice levels to play too. And considering that this game is number two, you'd probably figure that I'd have more to say about it. But, uh, I don't. Before we hit number one, let's do a quick recap. Number ten, Shadow of the Colossus. Number nine, Spyro 2. And number eight, Sims 2. And number seven, Pilot Wings Resort. Number six, Clone Over 2. And number five, Minecraft. Number four, Endless Ocean. Number three, Little Inferno. Number two, Little Big Planet. And the number one game to play when you're sick is... <sighs> Anyone that has ever played this game should have seen this coming a mile away, because for the number one spot, I'm choosing Flower. I was going to pair this with Journey for the same reasons as Flower, but you know what? Flower's better! Saying that Flower is relaxing is an understatement. You know those things where you're told to close your eyes and you can hear a waterfall and you feel a lot better afterwards? That is the same kind of effect that Flower has on you. Not only that, but some of the scenery in this game, specifically the scene with the turbines and the sunset, genuinely gave me vivid memories of my childhood that I hadn't remembered before. I have no idea how it did that. I'm not sure why, but all I know is manly tears. You know what? No, not the, the tears were not manly at all. I let myself get emotional over this game because it's just that awesome. Flower broke me emotionally, and no game has ever done that before, and I don't think a game's going to do that again for a long while. A couple of years back, my friend was saying, uh, Flower, you control a little petal. Uh, how fun. Sounds boring and stupid. That is the kind of vapid ignorance that keeps so many people from experiencing this, and I use the term experience 100% correctly because this is a game. A flower is not a game. You control a single flower petal blowing through the wind. You float into other flowers to then have those petals follow you. Before you know it, you have an army of petals following you through the wind like a giant wind snake. There's no time limit, no obvious objective, no words spoken because there's no people. No real cutscenes unless these 10 second clips count. I genuinely believe that I came out of Flower as a different person, and I still listen to the soundtrack every day while doing college work. Flower is a relaxing game to a therapeutic degree, and thus, the best game of all time to play when you're feeling sick. This has been Farfetch Reviews, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Like I said at the beginning of this video, hopefully my voice was clear enough for you to hear. I know that sometimes my voice gets a little bit stumbly and you can't understand what I'm saying, but hopefully for the most part you understood what I was saying. Anyway, if you enjoyed this top 10, here are some annotations to my previous top 10 of my Super Mario Galaxy Galaxies, as well as some of my previous reviews down there. If you've enjoyed any of the content I've ever made, click the far-fetched icon to subscribe. It supports me greatly. Your subscriptions and support have already motivated me to make a video for you guys despite feeling like poop like I do now so your subscription will only motivate me further. Anyway I've got to go. I'm going to go try and beat Spyro 2 in one sitting again. See you next time.
By the way, you know when you see people put whipped cream in hot chocolate on like American TV shows? I just tried that for the first time ever. Put like a little bit of whipped cream in and stir it in. It's the best thing ever.